This is it. Two episodes left. Things are popping off. Elsa got crushed by a hippo after telling Garfield her life story. And Garfield says, I don't want to hear it. Lady, this is a Wendy's. Get out of here. Take the fries and leave. Ram got Al Goyd. Ram basically took the book, right? Her goal was to free Roswell from the curse of his him being bound to this book and not being able to move forward. And that Ram's trying to prove that feelings can change. Now, we threw the book in the fire. Roswell got super mad. I wanted Ram to have a moment where she says, I love you. And then Roswell to say, I love Echidna. This would have been the perfect like reference back to episode 18. But I don't think Ram's dead. I think she's going to be fine somehow. Now... What else is happening? I'm not... Uh... Subaru, right? The last thing left is to deal with Biku. The mansion is on fire. Everything is falling down. We need to convince Biku to come out with us. Let's begin today's reaction. Damn, everyone waited outside while it's snowing. Okay, there's like a huge ice little barrier thing. I don't know who made this thing, but the people were supposedly waiting outside in the freezing snow the entire time. Now, the rabbit. Remember, great rabbit threat is still among us. Uh-oh. And who made this? Puck. Puck? Puck? I'm gonna assume Puck. That spirit. Yep. <laughs> Something's cracking. Big tree? That's right, all three is done. Handle what? For them to all get put in there? Okay. Will Amelia solve the great rabbit problem? I don't know. But like the snow is here. This snow itself is a source of mana as well. Roswell's a huge mana source. Amelia as well. Rabbits are coming. Can we beat the rabbits right now? I'm just looking at that frozen tree. It's like, what is that tree supposed to be? Roswell Ram. Ram. <laughs> Why are you saying Ram as if someone else did this, bro? You did this. You did this to her. Now, I know it was in the heat of the moment, right? That's 400 years of this investment thrown out the window when Ram basically threw the book into the fire. But like, uh, Ram, you're going to be good, right? Ram is gonna be alive. She can tank this. Ram. Mm -hmm. Love. I still don't know how I really feel about the love between Ram and Roswell because she's clearly a victim of uh, a Stockholm Syndrome, right? And everything was planned. It's not as if Roswell is like her savior. It's, it's weird where we have to acknowledge that is a thing, but they have moved past that and her feelings. It is still genuine, even if there's a lot of fucked up things that happened to lead up to these feelings. That's right. It's interesting. Oh, okay, snow is now falling. I just saw a speck of snow here. So, like, I think that there's two separate timelines happening, right? Because this is still the past, and what we saw earlier on is a bit ahead into the future, and the snow has been just falling down hard. Yeah, here's the snow. Rabbits! Uh-oh! Bunnies! Bunnies! He's the greatest magician. Hector. That devil. 100% referring to Hector, right? That's very interesting how the left eye is only twitching here, right? And some people theorize that on the left side may be supposed to represent Hector, right? The left side is supposed to be that half 
that he's taken in. I don't know what the hell happened after Echidna and Hector apparently fought, but if the left side is twitching like that, maybe it's kind of symbol like a symbolism to portray that like, yeah, he really is not, you know, a devil at the end. You can't just like copy him, right? But Puck's saying like, you will never be like that devil. And like his quote unquote devil role play, if it's real or not, just kind of like falling apart. Bye bye, book. That's for you to find out. Make your own decisions. I mean, if you've all, if you've done nothing but just listen to a script for 400 years, I guess like you're not gonna know what to do anymore. Like you're basically brain rotted, right? How could you possibly know what to do now? You have to figure out your own decisions. Follow Subaru and love Ram. Ram. Horn. Here we go. <laughs> the nightly treatments. And Roswell to him too, right? You, you can blame, you know, Roswell for quote-unquote grooming Ram, but Roswell too was groomed by Echidna, right? At the end of the day, everyone is just a victim, and Echidna is the monster. And then you can say, no, Echidna herself is also a victim of something else. I don't know, but just like this emotion, voice acting, reminds me of like Roswell, and he truly was like a child back then, right? Like Roswell A. Mathers meeting Echidna for the first time. And like, you gotta make your own decisions, man. Like, you gotta be a big boy. For 400 years, this growth has been stunted, clinging on to the past. Can you make your own decisions and move forward? We'll see. He don't know shit after all this time because he just relied on that fucking book. All right, what is this tree thing? This is the source, got it. That's what Roswell did with that crystal of, you know, OG Ryuzu in there. Oh. Oh, that animation was crazy. It's leading us in? No, it's Pandora! <laughs> Army of lollies! Hey. There's so many of them. I just can't wait to like... I want them to be used in third season, bro. As like an army of suicide bombers that all just like charges in. Totsugeki! And they all just blow up in front of the enemies. Like... Okay, I've already mentioned how I want the battle to start. Like, if the battle's gonna start with, like, two opposing sides just facing off, I want Natsuki Subaru to just do this pose to start the war. And as soon as he does this, the army of Ryuzu's just all fucking charge in doing a Naruto run. Just suicide lolly bombers. Clones. They won't let her go. That one? Shima-san. ということは試練を終えられたのですね。カーボの賭けはただ。リュウズさん。オージー。その子を連れ出しに来たの。みんな一緒にボスに連れて行けばいい。見てそれが最初に出てくるのか。オッケー、だ。くって乗せてあげれ
こうして機会が与えられたならわしはわし役目はわかるじゃが10年かわいい孫が一緒にいてくれていこうと胸を張っておるわしはあの子の背中を押すよ Sacrificing oneself so that Garfield can move forward. Is that what's happening here? My sister's made from half of me. And the other half. Dona? Here we go! She says some magic words, and the OG one will now. They're gone. They poured it somewhere. Wow. Look at that development and growth. So, I'm just supposed to assume uh, OG. Ryuzumayer and Shima, they're just gone. She, she mouthed some spell, and now they're just gone from the world? Did they port somewhere else? Like, I don't think that's a complete confirmation that they're just completely gone, but for now, they're gone. Ram Roswell! Oh, slick. That was cool. Roswell's so depressed. He doesn't care. <gasps> there we go! Ram's alive! Good, good, good! <laughs> Roswell's not responding. <laughs> I think he is. <laughs> These poor lollies, though. They have to be barefoot in the snow. That is the most cruel thing. <laughs> He's given up. <laughs> he has no reason to live. Oh! <laughs> This is a good scene. Roswell is just devoid of any hope because, you know, he's been only listening to the book. He's confused. What do I do now? Amelia takes him by the fucking collar. Don't give up. That's right. The future. Yo, this is some like Subaru shit again. Like. So much of his personality has rubbed off on Amelia. This could definitely be a Subaru just like monologue scene. Look at me! Even Roswell! Oh, bunnies! Bunnies! Here we go, the bunnies are here! Maybe both. They just follow Mana, right? <laughs> Amelia versus bunnies? <laughs> Things are honestly looking pretty decent, even though the bunnies are out, right? A Amelia right now, it feels like I can completely trust her. Most of the times, I have no faith in Amelia, but right now, it feels like she can fucking do it. And with her eyes, like... She's very powerful, right? She's extremely powerful. I, I feel like, what do we do? Just freeze all the bunnies? Is that a solution? And they will not attack the path of ice. That's kind of interesting, huh? How like, maybe it's too high up. It doesn't even look too high up. Like the bunnies won't jump on them. They're just falling on the side. Okay. Yeah. Also, the, how, they're, how they're carrying Rosal is hilarious. Look, there's like... There's probably one more lolly right behind that we can't see. There's five separate lollies, including one behind that we can't see. And Rosal and Ram just... This is almost as funny as Juice, quote-unquote, hovering in the air to everyone else, just going like this, with the unseen hand, you know? This, this is kind of reminding me of that. Hey, back at the mansion! Biko! Betty, let go of that book. I guess we're gonna burn this shit too. Like, leave this book behind. Subaru will take Betty out of the mansion. Then both, you know, perfect copies of the Tomb of Wisdom, gone. So only Echidna, assuming Echidna has the Tomb of Wisdom. And then everyone else has defect gospels in the, uh, in the church. <laughs> 400 years. 
そうだね。金書庫とでも呼ぼうか。Can't see a kid in his eyes either. So, like, all of her knowledge is in this library. But that is such an L to lose this hidden library. Right? Part of the contract wasn't just to fulfill、um, who Betty's gonna choose as a chosen one, but then to, like, like, like、um, inherit all the knowledge of the Forbidden Library. If we just take Betty out and the mansion collapses, I'm not sure how this works because this is supposed to be like a different realm through door passage. But if this all gets burned up, then that's such a waste. Unless Betty does have all the knowledge in her head and she can like pass it on to Subaru somehow, but like. I feel like there's so much valuable shit in here. Oh, you'll be of no help against an enemy Roswell can't handle. You'll be of no help. Roswell is just that good. Gaslight. Manipulate. We finally see a kid in his eyes now. During these past times. Book. It's a replica of the Tomb of Wisdom. That much we know because it's a grimoire. The authority granted to me. The Tomb of Wisdom. The authority granted to me. Now, I don't know if this is a sub thing, but it's now sounding like the authority of greed is the Tomb of Wisdom. Her authority is future sight predicting many different possibilities. Not perfect, but she herself, the authority. Okay, okay, okay. And now, let's think about this, right? Let's think about this. Segment, unseen hand. Juice unseen hand, Subaru invisible problem, same shit. And the, and, the, and the funny theory of why all the authorities are the same is even though the authorities are supposed to change and adapt to a person's desires and personality, because it's slothful, the authority is so fucking lazy that it's the same shit every time. Sure. But if we're gonna assume that for greed that it's gonna change, what would like Regulus's authority be, you know? It's just like the tomb of wisdom. Is a kid that's authority, but I fail to see how something similar could just be Regulus's power, where he seemingly has just omniscient, just control over just things at an atomic level. It's just, it's completely different. Thematically, the Tomb of Wisdom here compared to like Regulus's powers, completely different. <laughs> and it kind of makes sense how the Tomb of Wisdom. Right? If, if it's her authority to copy, is how Echidna would then just like intentionally fulfill, like whatever future she wanted them to see, she would like give them just that much. What about the Gospels though? How does the Gospels work, right? Because the Gospels are defects. Maybe the Gospels were like experiments in trying to make these grimoires, which were the perfect copy, right? And then the defects were just <laughs> given out to the other church members. <laughs> Cap. That person. Now, at this point, we're supposed to believe that this is a lie. Echidna herself has pretty much said that it was a social experiment and she wanted to see what Biaku would choose. So there's no possibility that that person, like, according to her tomb of wisdom, her authority, her authority told her that a man named Subaru would appear, right? It didn't happen. Or at least that's what we're supposed to believe because she just wanted Betty to like figure out your own answer. Betty, I want you to grow up healthy at least. Yeah. How healthy this is gonna be leaving your quote unquote daughter to this 400 years of a social experiment where she just. She just trapped here. Just what a cruel fucking thing. Like, monster. Echidna is such a fucking monster. But she's a witch! What do you expect? That's how witches are. <laughs> Then Rosal looks rough here. He's got stubbles. He's usually so perfectly shaven. Seeing stubbles on Razal's face with all these lines doesn't make him look too good. Replicating a soul, saving it in a vessel. 
This is Rosal A. Mathers figuring out how can he become Rosal B. Mathers, Rosal C. Mathers, and onwards and onwards. And am I supposed to believe at this point that the battle against Hector has been done? Roswell is somehow back. The colors of his eyes seems to match, right? There's this kind of slight tint on the screen to show that it's a flashback, so maybe that's obfuscating the colors, but from what I see, after meeting Hector, it seems like his eyes are still the same. Did Roswell ever wear face paint? Did Roswell ever wear makeup until this point? I don't think so, right? At least from what we've seen in the flashbacks, he's never worn makeup until that encounter with Hector, right? And like his speech patterns maybe have changed. I mean, he has a little frills here. I don't know, but like, I'm interested to take note of. B Mathers. Okay. At this point, he took back shots from Regulus. But here's the thing. Apparently, Regulus is a virgin. And I don't care. Like, do you think you can just show up to my video and say, <laughs> your theory is stupid because Tapi said Regulus is a virgin. All right. I can just do the simple mental gymnastics because you as a monkey think that that's the limitation of human imaginations. Rosal extracted the sperm of Regulus. Yes. Regulus is still a virgin. Rosal extracted the sperm. <laughs> Created Roswell B. Mathers through in vitro. I don't know. There, there's so many different ways to do this shit. I don't care if he's a virgin, bro. B. Mathers. Okay, so from A to B is when the eye fucking changed. Now, I'm meaning a lot about Regulus's eye here, right? I'm meaning a lot, but it could be just as simple as Hector. Uh, something about just... Because like A to B, what happened? It was creating a vessel, right, and soul transplant, maybe something about the experiment has, like, fragmented his soul, one part is Hector, one part is Roswell, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know, but I really want to believe that this is Regulus's genes. I... Yes, Regulus is a B, C, D, and he becomes more clown-like! Like, his outfit changes more like Hector's drip, right? It becomes more and more clown-like. Random dudes. Oh! Ain't this the dad of the fucking bandit? This is the guy that I told you about. This is one of the nobles that's important in Lugunica. He's the one that called fell to sewer rat. And I don't think that he's in the wrong. He is the one person against the covenant of the dragon saying like, Bro, why the fuck are we choosing our next ruler through an RNG coin toss? Why don't we let actual candidates suitable to rule the throne with proper education and merits to ascend? That's why he was so mean to Felton Amelia, because it's like, why the hell are we just letting this happen? Because the dragon says so? That's bullshit. And he's also the dad of the leader of the three thugs that we see in the streets. I think it's him, right? He was also, and him, and what's his name? Ah, uh, fuck, fuck, Knight Commander. Knight Commander, uh, Marcos. Marcos's dad sacrificed himself to save him during some sort of subjugation with another dragon, I hear. And him and Marcos are tight now. He's actually not a bad guy. He's like, actually not a bad guy. He seems like a piece of shit, but if you approach it from their perspective and what they're going through, he's like one of the most logical persons that's like, you know what, I think he's cooking. Is there anyone else? Because this is the guy I remember. He kind of seems familiar. I don't know. He, he, he kind, I, I don't have a name for him. He, he kind of looks familiar. He just bald. Is this Otto's dad? No, it's, it's not, right? It's just a random dude, right? This, this is not Otto's dad, right? I don't think so, no. No. The only, and then this guy, I have no clue. I think the only important person is this guy, right? This guy definitely noticed him because of his mustache. 
So why did he want to show up to the hidden library? I mean, he actually reached it to get some secrets. Maybe something about, you know, the throne work session? I don't know. Okay, this is the weirdest part, though. Biku just says she's reunited with one I admire as a big brother, but at no point in time do we ever see Puck in the flashback, right? Like, like... How the hell does this make sense? Like, Puck did not exist back then to our flashback, right? But Biko already knew Puck at that time. Puck existed pre calanime If we judge the timeline and the, the information he knows, right, about Hector and Satila, he's pre calamity 400 years, but, like, they've already met. How was he created? I thought that Echidna created him just because Biko refers to him as big brother and they're both spirits, great spirits, but... I don't know! Where the hell do you show up, bro? Oh, that's... That's what was happening in Arc 2? When they were having such happy moments outside and Biko was always trying to have spend time with Puck, this is how she was feeling? Oh my god. Half devil, bro! She hated Amelia! Well, I don't know hate is the right word, but she referred to her as a half-devil here, man. <laughs> and the jealousy. She intentionally shut herself in in order to protect Amelia from her, like, lashing out. Damn! Subaru showed up! <laughs> That's it. 400 fucking years you're in here as a social experiment, just suffering, suffering. Puck also is being taken away by Amelia, suffering, suffering. Then this fucking neat shows up. <laughs> Number NPC found in the mansion. Wow, it's a drill lolly. Imagine that. Imagine that, bro. That's just so fucked up. <laughs> That's right. And he kept showing up. And then Juice, right? Because, like, for the first time, someone is finally showing up multiple times. He seems different. Could he be the one? And then the gospel, which implies Juice, Sloth, he's dead. I don't know exactly how she assumed Juice. Maybe he already knew that Betrugus was the one attacking, but she saw the gospel. She's like, oh, that means like, what happened, what happened to the Sloth Witch Factor? I guess Juice has passed on. That's like the part where she's like, another person has left me. It's, it's like pain. El Mathers. Mother. You need to make your own moves, Betty. Yeah. Okay, she... Well, no, it's not that. It's that that person never existed. And it's for you to figure out who it is. But if we're going to just... If we're just going to trash what Echidna wanted, then we need to also just abandon it. That person does not exist. It's not about who, who Betty accepts as a person. That person never existed. Just take Subaru's hand and leave. Betty, no. No. Kicked out. <laughs> Are you really the one for me? Betty's been waiting for 400 years! <laughs> Are you stupid? No, I'm not- Something about that. Just frame one. Just didn't even stop. Just fucking frame one, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, where is Betty at? Garfield? Matey? Oh, no, Frederick is all naked because she transformed. So is Garfield technically? No, Garfield's pants just are still good somehow. But we have Matey. That's the most important thing. Matey, again, her, her power to control witch fiends, crazy shit. We need to take her. We need to literally kidnap her. Somehow make her join us. If she doesn't, just use her powers because... Way too important. Petra! The secret passage. Wait, oh! That's what they're talking about, remember? 
I should have remembered this back in season one. This is actually the passage in one of those rune runs where super and everything was frozen inside and super would just like touch the handle and was like, ooh, that's what they're talking about. <laughs> Here we go, we're back! <laughs> chill, chill, chill! <laughs> Vey is just so unbothered. Like, you're back, you're not him. Get, get the fuck out. I'm, I'm literally about to make my peace and die in here. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, she actually did it. <laughs> Again? Are we gonna able to fight back immediately? One more time! We're back, we're back! <laughs> Yo, he did it! Yeah, he just clinged onto the fucking door and just like hooked himself back in! Alright, we're in! Betty, let me cook! Let me talk! True! Right? Because if Betty truly wanted this to stop, she can force him to not find her again, right? The fact that we're able to find it through this door means deep inside, in the back of her mind, there's a part that wants to be able to save her, or else this wouldn't happen. <laughs> Unless we open all the doors. There isn't that person. I'm half expecting there to be a moment when in Betty's eyes, instead of we see nothing, there'll be a reflection of Subaru quite often in this show ReZero. Whenever there's like conflict and dialogue until uh, at the moment when like the like the, the conversation has been like delivered and they understand each other, like the reflection of Subaru will show up in like Amelia's eyes, right? Maybe if Betty agrees, like Subaru will show up in Biko's eyes here. <laughs> That's right. We're running out of time. <laughs> I'm not that person again. There's, I'm someone else. There we go. What's happening? The library's all falling down? What? Are you serious? We've tried this shit. I thought this would be it. I thought she fucking take her hand. You still know what? She's closed herself off again. And like, I'm assuming that this is her like spatial time abilities door passing. I don't know. She's basically just cutting Subaru off, just kicking him out of the hidden library. Now we can't even like find her because there's no door. What did she say there? What did, what did she say at the very end? It's not, I love you. That's what Satala would say if this is Satala. She says something here, you're not him. I don't know. I'm sorry? Or go away? I don't know. <laughs> this time we got thrown out of the mansion. Not just the door. Actually just fucking kicked out of the mansion. Now what? Uh, let me guess. Uh, Super is gonna do a bunch of monologue, justify why he needs to go back in there and save her. Hype music will play, he'll open the door, Betty's in there, we'll take her out. It's a day. That's gotta be it somehow. Yeah, she did. Then what? How do we find her? <laughs> that easy. It's just farewell. I thought they'd keep this like a secret that we could only find and cut content, but okay, farewell.
Hidden passage. There's one more door. The one last door. Okay. Yo, last time we touched this shit, things were so cold. Her hand, your finger just like snapped off. That's right. If you don't want this, don't show yourself. Oh, it's hot this time instead of cold. Biko? Biko? One more time? One last time? Hey! <laughs> Dude, the amount of times we've been kicked out of this place, re-enter, kicked out, re-enter. I've lost count. I've honestly lost count. I don't think we're in the double digits, but god damn, bro. Okay, we're back. Please, this time. <laughs> Look at that ham, bro. All burnt in that doorknob. Save me? Instead of Subaru saving Biko, Biko saves Subaru. And maybe this will give her a new purpose. She's been waiting for her savior, but that savior doesn't exist. It was all cap. But instead of approaching it from that angle, if we now give her that responsibility and duty, it gives her a sense of purpose. And she will live to save Subaru. Contract. I mean, we've made a similar contract back in Arc 2, right? And she was very happy to stick by her side throughout all that run in Episode 7. Let's go! Like, like... Let me save you. That would be the most cliche protagonist shit to say to a damsel in distress, but it's like, what's he gonna do, right? Realistically, I think it makes a lot of sense to ask Biku to save. Mm. But be with me. Oh. This is a better approach. That's right. That also happened. She, she, she healed us. Take my hand, Biko. Oh, that hand is all fucked up. What did he do there? He saw his hand, but it also has a handkerchief there. That was Petra's handkerchief. And now we don't see the handkerchief anymore. Wipe off the flute, because I thought that this is like, oh shit. There's a handkerchief on my wrist, and this is for Petra? And right now, I need to let Vico know that she's the only girl that matters. So at that moment, he's like, shit. Can't be showing her this right now. I'm gonna take this handkerchief off. That's my head cannon, right? Based on what the anime scenes are showing me, right? Right? Hand, handkerchief, then no handkerchief in my head cannon. He was like, ah shit. Biko's number one right now. Let me, let me just take that off real quick. Alright, now now take my hand. <laughs> take it, Biko! She'll have to do it. She's too kind. Instead, let's just call Biko that person. Biko, I might not be that person to you, but you are that person to me. <laughs> Fuck that book! That is the brutal reality, right, of these lifespans. And another person will simply move forward. But hey, Betty, that's the point of life. There's going to be things to cherish and things that's going to pass on. Nothing is forever. But if you cling on and hide away, then you will never experience any happiness. It's part of life. Mm -hmm. You can still have good times.
Well said. True. True. Instead of feeling a goodbye, that might or might not happen, right? Clinging on to this, like, this potential, like, oh no, you're just gonna disappear one day, but it's like, what are you gonna do? Just sit here and just be de just depressed all your life? That's like one of the biggest lessons in life where people can cling on to these like absolutes where like people are eventually gonna leave me so I'll just like protect my heart and never interact with people again but that's like you're just wasting your life now you're just wasting your life the highs are as high as the lows are as low right just because you feel sadness I mean the reason you feel sadness is the reason that you can also feel happiness too right or you can just cower away in life and just hide yourself and just forever just be neutral and I think that's just wasting your life you're just being a coward <gasps> One day, we can still have fun during that time. One day, we can still have fun during that time. We can still have fun and that's part of life! We can still enjoy it! That's what remember. but okay! Okay, we gotta really get out of here now, Biko! Books dropped! And they both died. Because they have too much. The end. Nah, nah. I'm sure we're out. This is gonna be great. The ending. Patrash is also here. Be cool and super is gonna come out. Here it is. I see a light. <laughs> what? Why is Otto getting abused by Petra right now? What the? Otto, wake up! <laughs> Pico! Subaru! Subaru! Ah, you're my name. Subaru! 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 Oh, she's... Wow, okay. She's changed. She's just... Complete... Like... Whatever Pico we've known so far, I guess we just removed it soon. And she's all dere dere now, huh? <laughs> Drop the beat! <laughs> Yo, what are we gonna do with the bunnies, bro? Biko and Subaru need to show up here, man. Let's go, Amelia. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's gonna fucking drop in. Oh my fucking god. The hero! Yo, I need him to be doing this kind of pose the entire time. As soon as the column of beam dies down, I need to see a shadow where he's like doing this shit. That'd be so fucking epic. Yeah. More like Biku. Is Biku here? Biku's here, right? <laughs> right side, Biko. <laughs> so you telling me that this guy kissed Amelia, told her I love you, and left. <laughs> and they got another fucking girl. <laughs> Showed up to Saber holding a new girl's hand. <laughs> but it's Betty. It's Betty. It's fine. I'm sure Amelia would understand. He truly is a lolly master, man. <laughs> Biko gonna subjugate the white rabbit? <laughs> Alright! That's the episode. Choose me, Betty. Choose me. I never thought about this kind of answer. I thought that Subaru's gonna say like, you know what? I'm not him. Because that person never existed. 
I'm my own independent person and we should get out together. But there was another layer on that. It was this layer of, honestly, I can't save you, but you can save me. And if I give you a reason, just like back in episode seven in season one to protect, Betty will do it. That's why she was, this is so unfair to, you know, just ask me of this. And this whole like clinging on to this theme of loss, right? In life, so many people, everyone can relate to this, of this feeling of people die and people go. Eventually, everyone moves on. Nothing is forever, but we don't want to admit that, right? We don't want everyone to accept that. So people like shut their hearts away. They like hide in their shells. They will no longer try to make new relationships in fear of losing them. And to a person like Betty, who was ha really had a very childish mindset and lived 400 years, right? It's really hard to make her feel different, but Raza said feelings can't change, but I feel like feelings are changing. And Betty, Subaru, is a new contract made? I'm not quite sure, but I'm gonna assume that it has been made to basically protect Subaru. And the stage has been set to literally defeat the bunnies too, right? Like, the bunnies, they are all here. Betty is here. Is she gonna use some crazy shadow magic to defeat all the bunnies and then there's only the serpent left? Uh, whatever it's gonna happen in the next episode, I feel it's gonna be such a triumphant outcome. And, like, think about it this timeline-wise, right? Think about this timeline-wise. The crazy shit now still is the fact that after Subaru made a fool of himself in front of everyone at the Royal Capital, in less than a week, he literally subjugated a white whale. And in the same fucking day, he then defeated the cult members, right? Led by one of the most, like, strongest, uh, one of the most, like, recognized cult, like, archbishops, like, um, Betrugis, right? Within a single day. Then, within probably the same fucking week, he subjugates the White Rabbit? Like, his resume on paper to this perfect timeline is actually fucking insane. By the time we return to the Royal Capital in Season 3, right? When we actually do return to the Royal Capital, what are people gonna think? Bro, you are literally our messiah. You are literally Jesus Christ performing miracles. You showed up to this world, a complete fucking foreigner beyond the Great Waterfall. And within like a month or something, you've performed miracles that like people couldn't do for centuries. You're like, that's the craziest shit to me. Like thinking from the perspective of everyone else in this perfect timeline and the progression and the achievements that the Amelia camp is having due to Natsuki Subaru just fucking mind-blowing and i think this is something that a lot of people watching ReZero don't ever think about because they're thinking in terms of how many times that we failed over and over again in different timelines but it's only been a couple days man it truly is fucking crazy what he's doing and i'm sure next episode it's gonna be very triumphant and betty's gonna pop off and that's it for me if you're still here and if you enjoyed this reaction please like the video check out the other playlist for even more content and until next time take care